Hey guys, welcome to another episode of CUDA Education Vulcan API Discussion. Today we're going to talk about descriptor sets. So um, a descriptor set is basically a means of um, getting Vulkan to access memory objects in, in memory. Okay, so I'm going to do a very high level review immediately and then after that I will um I will I will go a little bit more I'll, I'll, I'll clear 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 the whiteboard and go a little bit more granular and uh, specific but in a nutshell a descriptor set is used for, to help Vulcan access memory objects in 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 memory now these memory objects are usually managed by the CPU you know accessible by the CPU and we need to shuttle we need to shuttle this in this this data from the CPU to the GPU and then of course to the Vulkan API so the Vulkan API can render the scene and and whatever you see on the screen okay but again let, let me go very high level and then you know we'll, we'll get into the details but at least if you have the high level understanding it will help you to to, to follow me when 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 I get more more detailed all right so in order for you to, 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 to set up a descriptor set, the first thing that you're going to have to do, right, is um, you're going to have to create what is called uh, A, descriptor pool okay now a descriptor pool is just sort of like a it's sort of like a basket it's sort of like a, a bucket of resources and information so um you know in order in order for us to get to a descriptor set we need to acquire hardware resources and and this hardware resource is usually on the GPU, it's usually something to do with video RAM and all that stuff. But there's hardware resources that we need to acquire in order for us to, to get to descriptor sets. So the descriptor pool is just, you know, acquiring a bucket of hardware resources that, that we, we are going to slice and dice and use for our purposes. It is no different from the command command pool that we, we create when we were discussing command buffers. Okay, so descriptor pool is just collecting hardware resources now within within the descriptor pool now we have to go about allocating descriptor sets okay so this we're allocating descriptor sets or descriptor set allocation okay we, we haven't reached descriptor sets yet we're just dealing with descriptor set allocation all right so let us let us get into that so um i'll just do this And all descriptor set allocation is is basically doing is it's telling it's telling Vulcan that hey, we we are going to allocate some descriptor sets. All right, that's that's pretty much all it is. It, it's just another another lower level layer of granul granularity telling Vulcan hey, we we already had the resources for descriptor sets, but let's now we're gonna start allocating, you know, specific descriptor sets, and. This is this is where things get a, a little bit more interesting. So within within the so so now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna allocate some descriptor sets. So let us do that. So let's start with um, let's say this is a descriptor set zero. Okay. So we're gonna have descriptor set zero. Okay, so there's descriptor set zero. 
we might have, you know, you know, another descriptor set over here, another descriptor set over here, descriptor set one over here, descriptor set two, descriptor set three, descriptor set four. All right. So right now, let me just focus on descriptor set zero, but, but just understand that you're allocating now different descriptor sets. So we have descriptor set zero, one, two, three, four, what have you. Okay. That's fine. So now, now we're, we're getting a little bit closer to where we want to be. Um, let me, Let me just make this a little bigger. Just so. I could, um, you know, have more space to do what I need to do. Okay. So now we have, we have allocated a descriptor set and this one is a descriptor set zero. Okay. So we, we are a little bit closer now, um, because we have, we have acquired, we have acquired hardware resources. We have set up our descriptor set allocation. We're going to have one descriptor set, descriptor set, you know, the first one, descriptor set zero or what have you, right? And within the descriptor set now, now we're inside of the descriptor set, we have what we call a descriptor set layout. Um, okay, so this is now a descriptor set layout. And a descriptor set layout is now going to, um, is, is, is now going to describe to the world and to Vulcan exactly what is in this, this, this memory. So what kind of memory is in there? What can access the memory in terms of what on the graphics pipeline for Vulcan, what can access this specific piece of memory and how many pieces of memory do you have in this, um, in, 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 in this particular, uh, descriptor set or arrangement right here. So, um, within the descriptor set layout, you might have, and I might, I'm going to have to draw a little smaller now. Okay, so within that now, we might have a descriptor set layout binding. Okay. And the, 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 the descriptor set layout binding basically describes to us It's basically binding one. So binding one might have, for example, a uniform buffer object. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about uniform buffer object um, a, a little later in the video. But descriptor set binding one might have a uniform buffer object. And then it's also, so we know, we know it's going to have a UBO. And it's also, so so we know it's going to have a UBO. And it's also going to tell us what pipeline stage we 
what pipeline stage has access to it? Right? So let's, let's review. We have our descriptor pool, which is just a bunch of hardware resources. Then we say, okay, we're gonna do a descriptor set allocations. We have our first descriptor set, descriptor set zero. Within the descriptor set, we have, to, we have to declare a layout, a descriptor set layout, right? Which then within the descriptor set layout, we have a descriptor set layout binding. And here we have our first binding, binding one, which is of type UBO. And then it also has, um, it, it also declares what, what, um, what, what pipeline stage. So this might be the vertex shader or the vertex buffer pipeline stage, what have you will be able to access the UBO in here. So descriptor sets, all it does is it helps us to, it helps us to um, access data on, in memory and describe what data it is. It's, it's, it's of memory type U, uniform buffer object and who can access the data. So within this descriptor set layout binding, we might have another binding. So we'll call this, um, I don't want to confuse you guys, but bear with me. You might have here binding two. Right? And then within this, you might have something like an image buffer, right? Like something, and then what pipeline stage? Uh, what? pipeline stage can access so again Actually, I'll just leave this. So as you can see, um, one second.
one of the most important features of the descriptor is the descriptor set layout. This is a very important feature because in this, you're going to be able to basically define the different bindings that um, are in the hardware resource. So you have a descriptor set and a descriptor set basically refers to um, different uh, memory resources, right? And, and, and the, 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 the bindings of them, the set of them, okay? So we have our descriptor set and the descriptor set has two descriptors in it. It has a UBO descriptor and an image buffer descriptor. And it also tells you for the UBO and the image buffer what, what pipeline stages can access this. Uh, the vertex buffer can access this, maybe the fragment, the, 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 the vertex shader, the fragment shader could access this. Vertex shader can access this, fragment shader can access this. So, you know, every time, every time you, you, you set up a descriptor set of zero or, or dis, uh, a descriptor set of type zero, Vulkan is gonna expect this particular layout. They're gonna expect the, uh, binding one to have a UBO and binding two to have an image buffer. So you could create many descriptor sets off of descriptor set zero and, and have this kind of arrangement. Now, just like how we have descriptor set zero, zero with, this, with this arrangement, we could have, you know, a uh, descriptor set one and you know uh I'm, I'm not gonna go into detail but you might have binding one binding two and binding three and you know binding one is an image binding two is is an image again and binding three is like a texture or something or binding one is a UBO, UBO, UBO. They're all UBOs. But every time you, 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 you make something off of a descriptor set one type, it's going to expect this layout. And remember, remember this binding layout is, is basically going to be attached to the, to the graphics pipeline or what have you, right? So you have to be careful about, you know, how you're, how you're, you're using this stuff. We might have, you know, descriptor set two, you know, and descriptor set three. All right. So again, descriptor set allocation is very important because you have to, you have to have the resources and declare how many descriptor sets you want to have. So one, two, three, four. So we have four descriptor sets in, 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 in our allocation. So you better make sure you have the amount of hardware and you told Vulcan that, hey, I'm going to make four descriptor sets. And within the descriptor sets, you could have different bindings, which is different memory objects that are, are being bound to the, um, are being bound to, to, to the different descriptors, right? So um, again, descriptor sets are tasked with getting Vulcan access to memory objects, memory resources, okay? And doing it very fast and doing it very efficiently and what have you. So just, just in general, if, if you wanted to access something of, of, on your computer and you're, you're, trying to, you're trying to create a scene or something, you're gonna have to go into, go into your storage system, your SSD or hard drive or whatever, and you're going to have to tell Vulcan, hey, Vulcan, I have a UBO that I want to access. And the only thing that can access the, um, the only thing that can access this UBO is the, 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 the vertex shader or the vertex buffer or what have you. That's the only, the, the vertex shader is the only thing that can access um, uh, this UBO. For this, the only thing that can access it is the, is the, is the fragment shader, right? And this is the layout of this descriptor set that I set out. It only has two bindings. It has the first binding is for a UBO. The second binding is for an image buffer. And, you know, whenever I'm, whenever I'm processing a descriptor set or, or creating a descriptor set of, of, of this descriptor set zero, I'm expecting this arrangement of data and information. Um, 
There are other discussions and complications as it relates to when you're binding this now to the graphics pipeline. Um, you know, you, you could interchange descriptor sets assuming that the binding is the same. So you have two bindings and what have you, and the graphics pipeline expects the two bindings or, or what have you. You, you might be able to, to, to do a quick switch and get away with it. But if you have a different descriptor set with a different layout, you're going to run into problems. But I, I don't really want to get into that discussion right here because it's going to confuse you. But just, just understand, as far as I'm concerned, this is how I see descriptor sets in Vulkan. We have our descriptors pool that manages hardware resources and prepares everything, you know, gives us the ability to do this stuff. We have descriptor set allocation where we're, we're um, you know, we're, we're declaring how many descriptor sets we expect and, and what, what, you know, just, just basically how many descriptor sets we expect. And then we have, you know, we create the descriptor set and then we create the descriptor set layout, which declares the bindings for each of the descriptor sets, right? There are limitations on the number of descriptor sets that you can create. Um, there's, you know, hardware limitations, um, other limitations, what have you. So you kind of have to be careful about the number of them. Um, um, you, you could have, you could have a descriptor set, um, and, and a descriptor set binding or layout that, that points to a portion of a UBO. It doesn't have to be the full UBO, uh, object or file. It could be a portion of it. Um, there are a lot of, there, there are a lot of, uh, 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 granularities and, and, and ways to go about this. But as far as I'm concerned, in terms of a mental model of descriptor sets, this, this is the way I see it and I'm sticking to it. But again, the descriptor set layout is very, 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 very important because this, this is what, um, you know, th this, this is where a lot of people get tripped up on. Um, and, and, um, again, the UBO might be changing on a per frame basis. It might be changing on a per draw, a per, a per, uh, a per render, a, a, a per frame, frame basis. So this, this stuff is designed, UBOs are designed to be very small. Uh, it's usually read only memory. So you, you, you update it on the CPU side and then basically the, the, the GPU and Vulkan grabs it and renders it on the screen. So this is designed to be very fast. And this whole system is designed to help Vulkan to access the UBO very fast and um, get stuff rendered on the screen quickly. That, that, that not only rendered quickly, but also can, can be updated and, and, and changed quickly because you're changing the data of the UBO and it's being pulled into Vulkan to render on the screen. So uh, I hope this clarifies stuff. I do have another another um, video that I'm gonna create that, that goes into a different uh, discussion about this, but I think it was important to have this big picture, um, this big picture overview of, of what I'm talking about. Because when, when, once I get into like the functions and, and more granular stuff and I refer to bindings, if you don't have this mental picture, it's going to be hard for you to appreciate and understand what I'm talking about. Anyway, guys, um, tutorial number 14, tutorial number 14 is up on the, um, up on the CUDA education store. So I need you guys to, um, to, to, to check it out. Um, I'll, I'll link a description to it and I'll, I'll link you know, the, the link to it in the description below, and it will, um, it will discuss this in, on in code. So I have code that, um, courtesy of Sasha Williams, he, he has open source free, freely available code that, um, has a planet in the middle and then it has rocks surrounding the planet, circling the planet and the rocks themselves are also rotating. So I go into that code and I talk about descriptor set descriptor set allocation, descriptor pool, descriptor set layout, and, and sort of try to make sense of, of what you're seeing here. So that's all in tutorial number 14. I will link it below. Um, and you know, you'll be able to have running code on your windows machine, right? Running code on your windows machine where you could see this stuff run 
manipulate it and 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 see see the 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 the, the planet and the rocks and everything rendered on your screen and you can tinker with it remember here at code education we believe in we believe in um running code on a screen right and being able to work with it um if you want to be able to have that code run on your machine machine you're going to have to check out tutorial number 13 so tutorial number 13 walks you through getting the vulcan api examples running on your windows based machine assuming you have a g a vulcan capable gpu on your system um again this code and the examples is courtesy of sasha williams and um you know it's freely available code it's off of, off of github but tutorial number 13 basically walks you through the process of getting everything um installed and, and and running on your on your machine all right guys i hope this helps uh let me know what you think in the comments below i know this video is a little long but it's important to really understand on a high level what what we're trying to do here the script to sets is about getting memory objects memory resources from your hardware and getting it fast and efficient and declaring what you're trying to get and declaring who has access to what you're getting all right and then you have the layout of the bindings and all of that stuff all right guys i'm done have a good day